In this video series, I have documented the largest auto repair project I have ever worked on. I decided to record the process because it is invaluable for reference and sharing my experience may also help someone else. I want it to be as thorough as possible and show as much of the process as I could, so this is intended to be similar to an episodic series broken into parts. This is part one. I'm repairing our 2001 Montero, which after checking the diagnostic fault codes showed a cylinder three misfire error, random multiple misfire error, crankshaft position circuit error, and had a visible oil leak from the valve covers. I decided to take the entire engine apart to check all the way to the head gasket to truly diagnose and fix all the issues she was having. I decided to do it myself because I wanted to learn how. I believed I could do it and I can use the experience as another step towards self-sustainability. For me, buying the tools, parts, and learning what I needed to do it was way more worth it as an investment and less expensive than taking her to a mechanic. I'll show at the end of the series a cost breakdown detailing how much we saved, and in the description is a list of links that I compiled to the tools, parts, and other things that I thought would be useful to fix her. Her mileage at repair was 158,220 miles. Let's begin. I don't know, it's kind of like a really big job, but I'm not that worried about it because I've been able to arm myself with knowledge and I believe in myself that I can do it. Now, before I started the repair, I ordered a repair manual and I studied it so that I would know all the processes and then I made an annotated list um, outlining all of the processes that I'm going to have to do to the finish. So taking everything apart and then reassembling it. Some of the tools I'll be using include this socket and wrench set with a screwdriver, various socket extenders, drive adapters and universal joints, needle nose and standard pliers, 8 inch adjustable wrench, an 18 inch breaker bar, a hex socket set metric, one pound hammer, a 10 to 150 foot pound torque wrench, and a 20 to 200 inch pound torque wrench. A universal camshaft and crankshaft sprocket holding tool, a timing belt auto tensioner pulley tensioning tool, rare earth magnets, an aluminum straight edge and feeler gauges, and an auto repair manual for my car. So the first thing on my list was to relieve the fuel pressure, and I did that by taking out the fuel pump relay, and then turning the key to start the engine, and then just letting the engine die out, and that'll remove any fuel from the lines, or it'll remove some of the pressure. After I relieved the fuel pressure, I took out the battery. When you take out the battery, Remember to disconnect the negative terminal first. So I'm getting ready to get started, but before I take anything apart, I want to label all the spark plug wires and all of the sensor electrical connection wires so that when I put it back together, I can find where the connections go more easily. The first thing I'm going to label are the spark plug wires, these right here. On my engine, there's a sequence up here on the plenum. And I believe that tells me which cylinder each ignition coil is going to. And I'm going to use that sequence to number my spark plug wires. To label the spark plug wires, I'm just going to take a piece of blue tape, wrap it around like that. And then this one is number three. I'll just write it on there. For the sensor electrical connectors, I'm going to start on the left side of the engine and work my way around to the right side of the engine. On top of the plenum right here, there's an electrical connector right here and an electrical connector right here.
And to label these, I'm going to label them with the same code on each side so that that way I know matching codes will be for that same connector. So I'm going to write the same code on each of these labels. So I finished labeling every hose and electrical connector that I can for now. There might be some more that I come to as I take things apart, but now I'm going to drain the coolant. To drain the coolant, I need to remove the coolant drain plug from the bottom of the radiator. But to get to that, I have to remove this lower shield from under the bumper. Right here is my coolant drain plug. I've got a concrete mixing tub positioned under the driver's side of my radiator to catch the coolant. If it's not flowing heavily, don't forget to take off your radiator cap. I forgot to do that, but now the coolant is flowing out. So what I'm going to do now is take the coolant that drained out and pour it into this jug so I can dispose of it. Now I'm going to drain the oil by removing the oil pan drain plug right here. While I'm under the car, I'm also going to replace this oil filter right here. Now before I put this new engine oil filter in, I'm going to fill it with some oil. Now that I'm done with the underside of the car, I'm going to move to the top and I have to take off this air intake right here, which goes all the way around to this air box, which I have to take off. And then also this tube that goes into the throttle body and the plenum. And once all that's off, then I'll work on taking off this plenum and we'll go from there. I'm going to start by unplugging this sensor right here on top of the air box. I think things will be easier if I take off this hose first and all I have to do that is take off these two hose clamps and disconnect a vacuum line back here. Now that's off, I'm going to work on the air box. What I'm going to do is try and take the air box and this intake piece out all in one. So I have two bolts right over there and these three bolts right here. And now the two bolts on the front of the intake.
And because I can, I'm just going to re-thread these bolts back into their holes. Just so that I don't have to keep track of them. Now I should be able to just lift this whole thing up. So now we've got all of that off. I'm going to take this battery tray out right now. So for the battery tray, I didn't realize there's a little nut right down there that's attaching it to the fuse box. And then also I think it has to come out with the coolant reservoir. The next big piece that I'm going to take off is this silver piece called the plenum. But before I do that, I have to disconnect all the electrical connectors and hoses. I'm gonna start on the left side of the engine and work my way around to the right. Now I'm gonna do the front of the engine. And now for the right side of the engine. There's a little screw right here that goes to a little ground wire. And I need to remove that before I can pull this harness back. So behind the plenum, there was this connector right here to the left that I can't get undone. But what I think I can do is undo that bolt between those two connectors and remove this entire bracket. Okay, so I've got everything disconnected. What I'm gonna do is just take this wiring harness and take it to the other side of the engine. And I can drape this out of the way. Also on the right side of the engine, there's another ground wire right there that I'm gonna remove from the plenum. The last thing I need to disconnect is this which is the throttle cable and i'm going to loosen this nut and pull it up and out i'm only going to undo this rear nut that way i don't have to readjust my throttle when i put it back together so now that there's some slack on the throttle i can pull the little cable pin out of this hole All that's left is to disconnect the spark plug cable wires. Now the only thing holding the plenum in place should be the bolts. I'm going to start on those now. From the left side of the engine, there's several bolts that I have to take out. Starting with over here, there's an EGR tube. And then there's a bolt right here from this bracket that I need to take out. This bolt right here behind this sensor, and then I'll work my way to the front of the engine. The first two bolts I'm gonna remove are these EGR pipe bolts. Next I'm gonna undo this bracket bolt and this bracket bolt. Now I'm onto the front of the engine, and I've got these two bolts right here for that fuel line support bracket. And 
Next thing I'm going to remove is this bracket right here. Back over by the throttle, I have to remove this coolant line and this coolant line. So now that I've got all the lines and the electrical connections taken off of the plenum, I'm going to undo the plenum bolts themselves. And I have a gasket that goes between the plenum and the intake manifold, and I can use it as a guide. I can, and I counted eight screws. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now that I've undone all the plenum bolts, I'm gonna see if I can rock the plenum up. It wants to move. Seems like there's still something holding it on. Let me find out. So it turns out there was still one bolt partially threaded. I should be able to lift it up now. What I wanna do is lift it straight up. Hang on, I forgot this little vacuum line. keep track of the plenum bolts, I made a little template and inserted the bolts in how they go in the plenum. That concludes this part of the series. Don't forget to check the description for more information and I'll see you in the next part.